Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marriott Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, March 23rd to work. The time is now 9 1 a.m. Uh, our first item to ask for is pledge of allegiance. So I'd like to ask for pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice. As always, the meetings are recorded for both audio and video. Uh, we ask that everyone please sign up your cell phones so we don't disturb the flow of the meeting. Anybody interested in masks or hand sanitizer, they are also still in front of the room. Um, anybody looking to make a public comment, we ask that you sign in on the sheet up front, and then when you come to the podium, you clearly state your name and address for the record. Um, okay. At this time, I'll open up the floor for public comment. Want to sign for public comment? Do um, you have anything you want to say or not? Yeah. Okay. I think it's all the We do have a representative from this car up here. Okay. Thank you for being here, by the way. Jose is all the way in the back. So, that's uh, Dave. You want to make your comment? David Kramer, seven sixteen, now road. Uh, are we stuck with this with the trash collection with the contract you have? Yes. Can we go out on our own? No, because of the way the ordinance is written, everybody has to have a trash collection through the township. Okay, yeah, I can get it for half the price, and not everybody is going with this company. I agree. We, we put it out to bid, and Mascara was the only company that responded to the bid. Yeah, I know, but they're double over double the price of what we had. That's, I understand. And I mean, it took me 10 minutes to make three phone calls, and I got a company, G&K, from Burnville, that'll do it for half the price. They didn't bid in, though. That's, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah, there was a bid in. Yeah, I know, but when they came in at that outrageous price, I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, going back a couple of years, we put this out to bid um, when we were on the renewal schedule for Eagle. And we had gotten, I think it was three, possibly four companies at that point. And they were all very high. They were all roughly in the realm of what JP Mascaro is right now, which is how to extend to Eagle rather than. I know, but I argued it back then. I could get my trash picked up cheaper when we use one to Eagle instead of it was going to save us money. And their excuse was the weight of the trucks going on our roads. Well, I think the farmers. A little heavier stuff on the roads and that yeah. trash truck. Yeah, I don't think it's the, the weight of the truck. That right? was their excuse back then. What 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 some of the problem is is that there's two basic places that they don't. Mascara owns their own landfill, but the other public landfill is in Schuylkill Haven, and the other one's in I believe it's your um uh where is that? Where is that what is that down there near on the other side of Reading near the Pagoda Motorcycle Club? Well, there's Pioneer Crossing, which we don't have. There's Western Burks that closed this year. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they will be closed at the end of the year, so they're no longer option. Right. So, so the problem is, is they're also driving far to dump when they don't own their own landfill. Okay, I get that, but like I'm saying, yeah. right? so that's so the 15 minutes, three phone calls, and I got the right. price. So the, the thing about this is, when you put out something for bid in a municipal sense. You have to go through the bid process. If somebody doesn't submit to bid, we can't entertain that that quote. Like it has to be done through a sealed bid process, and then it has to go to the lowest qualified bidder. Unfortunately, that's that is the law. Well, why why can't we go back to taking care of ourselves? Simply put, because there's an ordinance there, and there needs to be trash collection for people in the township. So okay, okay. I think go, go with me on the, a slight exercise here. If we don't have some mechanism of making sure people do it, it's going to be almost impossible to police that if it's not centralized. If we say, like, you can get your own, you can get your own, you can get your own, who is actually going to keep track of that? And who is going to make sure we don't enter into the, what was that, like, 90s when that ordinance was, was put in? Late 90s, early 2000s for the, the trash ordinance? Yeah. Um, where people just simply weren't doing it. 
they were just burning garbage and things like that rather than having it collected. So that was the reaction to that um, particular problem was to make sure everybody had trash collection. And the way you do that, everybody has to, to go in for a trash collection collectively. So okay. while, while I, I, I don't like the increase in price, and please believe me, I it, it sucks. I don't like it either. But the the unfortunate reality is we put it out to bid, only one company responded. And for good, bad, or indifferent, that's the lowest qualified bidder because there was there was no contest, there was no competition on it. Well, who's who's policing it now? Because not everybody's going with Eagle either. Well, so the, the trash collector is supposed to be, so if Eagle hasn't been doing that, that is the problem because the trash company has the list of properties, mailing addresses within the township. Well, what, what would happen if I just call JP and tell them no and I go with somebody else? And you technically could have something enforced against you by the township as far as what? You would file collection and do it. I still got to track it, but I'm just not paying double the price. As he stated, there's really nothing in, in our control uh, regarding the bid process. Uh, they place it out for bid. We place a bid and we're just following the ordinance of the township and the bid specifications. Okay, the ordinance states that you must have trash. We were the sole bidder. Now, I understand where you're coming from with uh, JK uh, Sanitation at Burnville, but I believe they're a one truck operation. All right. If they lose their landfill capacity, where do you go? Call somebody else. And when they lose their landfill capacity. Else? And well, the, and the other thing is in the interim, if somebody, when you're going with that one company and let's say their truck breaks down or they lose their landfill capacity, what happens with your garbage in the meantime? I'll sit there for a couple of days. But, well, but again, I have not had any week, so I yeah. got plenty of fill up. Well, we've been finding some guarantee. So with us, you get uh, the highest industry insurance bonds and bonding of $15 million, which no one else provides. We have our own recycling facility, we have our own landfill. Capacity. We have five transfer stations. We have over 700 vehicles on the road that can come in. If one breaks down, it's going to come back and take care of it. And you are correct. Having eight different companies in the town rolling through five days a week does add wear and tear to your roads. I understand that's not a problem, uh, but it does eventually become a problem when they get my problem, which they're not that bad. As far as, you know, I, I see these. Tractors and manure squares that are going on the road and basically running off a system damn big and wide. And I mean, I understand it. That's their livelihood. That's their job. I mean, they have a little bit more weight than tractors. Well, their track trucks are pretty heavy, first off. And the other thing to consider, and just again, going down the avenue of Devil's Advocate here, um, you don't have them coming in like clockwork every week. Well, I mean, they're going all year long, but it's you know once a week here and there. You're not you're not structurally driving the the circuit of the township with six trash trucks rather than one trash truck. So I mean, there there is a difference in in wear and tear from that. But all other things being equal, the reason my understanding of the reason why that ordinance was enacted because it's a little a little before my time. So please please go with me on that. Is if we don't have people collect, or we don't have standard trash collection, people were, are going to do two two things principally, three things if you count actually getting it collected. Um, they're either going to dispose of it improperly, such as like burying it in their own yard, which people have come across, uh, or burning it, um, or it just piles up and it becomes a, a public safety and health issue. So. The way they combated that, previous board of supervisors, was they put that ordinance in that said you must have trash collection. And the way that it's policed, if you will, is that the trash collection is through a single hall. I get that, but I know Newburgh Village, they have new, they have their whoever they get. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that town looks fine. So I mean not, nothing against the sheriff, what I'm about to say, but other companies, this was publicly advertised. It was out on ended, I believe. Like there was multiple avenues in which companies could have bid in. 
and no one took the time or the interest to do it other than JP Mascara. Well, I was just going to say, I don't know how they how you put it out there for a bit, but you know, with this stuff, I have enough trouble just trying to get. But well, it, well, it, was, it was bid in the paper, and then it was also bid on, on PenBid, which is one of the, the, the biggest, uh, for lack of a better term, marketplace. Uh, and that's what I got to say. And that's, that's yeah, the paper. It is the next. Yeah. 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 Every baller uses to, to bid on. Yeah, and it's, and it's not just followers. Like we put out like work stuff, it's almost always on PenBid because everybody across the common wall, for the most part, uses PenBid. So. No, like I said, I don't like the price increase either. That's something that, again, nothing against JP Mascara. I'm going to be Blames purely them. nuts and bolts here, where we have the three-year contract and the option for new. We always put it out for request to bid at that three-year mark to see if there's been a change in the landscape where price is going to come in. It's not super likely because they always tend to just go up, but it's not like it's going to be set in stone for a huge amount of time. It's so we'll kind of go back to where we can do it ourselves. We I mean, let's let's put it this way. There's always the opportunity for change. So that's something we can look into to see if there is a good mechanism. Case in point, the uh, the Walmart manager, we originally started out with um, having the SEO do the inspections. And that was purely a, um, I'll say, technical limitation around not being able to effectively track what houses were pumped already versus not pumped and who, who did it, et cetera. So since we brought in Tiger Terra, they have additional technical capabilities that we did not and the previous SEO did not, which is what allowed us to make that change where you can have your own pumper hauler do the inspection. So if we can find a different mechanism for adding multiple things as long as we're not in violation of contracts, then I personally am not opposed to something like that. We just have to make sure that it, it's workable. I wasn't on your first line. I asked the question. Sure. So, is that something that you need to? Did you sign in? Oh, yeah. Do, uh, do me a favor. So, and then uh, come up with yeah. the podium and then say your name and add it off. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Um, yeah, say your question at the podium and before you okay. sign the sheet. Okay. Thank yeah, you. just say your name and address and then you can speak. All right. Mary Boone, 516 South Burger Road, Marstown, Pennsylvania. So, would this be something that you could start looking into now? Yes. Or could we start looking into now? Yeah. So that because every we again, of course. Yeah. Every year they're going up. No, no. It's a third or fifth price. Our, our our first three years are a fixed price. The two year extension is an increase. Oh, so our first, so your three years we're yes, going to be at that rate for three years. I saw that happen before. Yeah. Uh, uh, like I said, purely and take the initiative then to start looking so that by next in three years we're not in the same. It would be us as the board. Okay, so are you guys going to work on that? We and, will be looking at that. And you as individuals can also do research and come to us and say, hey, look at yeah. this because we're human beings too. Yeah. We can miss something. We also can't be everywhere right. all at once. So right. maybe working on something else that's taking most of the attention yeah. and doing kind of that in the staff. Yeah. Okay. So if, you can, if you can find like, hey, this other township does it this way. We can call them up and see if we can get a copy of their ordinance or something. Well, talk to people in normal stores. Yes. Uh, and they, I, you know, I don't know. I thought they were for Mary Township. They're not. They were for. Yeah. And there was this heck of a lot cheaper than mine. There, so one of the one of the things that is a, a, a thing to keep as a consideration is if we look at like the Eagle contract that we were on previously, right. it's a lot lower. Yeah, so those we, those were rates that we had locked in five years ago. Okay. So it was pre COVID. Uh -huh. It was a lot of things were different. China was still buying a lot of recyclables and things like that. So there was a lot of contributions. So China's not doing that. So, that. so there was a bunch of major changes that happened right around 2019, 2020, okay. um, where uh, cost of labor went up, inflation went off the rails. Um, a lot of the things that we're putting money back into those programs right up. So certain places weren't buying certain types of waste product anymore or recyclables. So you saw the the actual cost of service go up and the things that were helping to bring that cost down for us as consumers went away. So it's it's a lot of uh, external pressures, on this, which is why it's kind of surprising that you have a hauler that is willing to do it for cap. Because when we did, again, a couple of years ago, $27 a month. Yeah, recycling? Huh? Exactly. Recycling? 
Uh, I really don't care about that. Most of it goes in the same day. Oh, that, 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 was, yeah, that was with Andy. That, that, that shouldn't be that. So what I what I will say is some of the market. Yeah, it's it's difficult. But one one of the things I will say is unless Eagle was completely bold based line to us, they did give us metrics and measurements on the amount of recyclables collected. So some some places though, just again, just to play devil's advocate, some places do bundle it and then split it at a process of plan. It's silly in my opinion, but I I actually looked up Thank when you. this first started getting complained about, there was actually a dirty jobs episode where a company did that. And everything would go on the same truck. And there were people that would sort it into recyclables or you know whatever at the processing plant. So it's it's not outside of the realm of possibility. I think it's silly and it's kind of a, a misuse of man hours, but bottom line is they may be doing it. So we did get recycling statistics from them for the purposes of our recycling grant. So unless it was, again, a, an outright lie to us, they were still processing recycling. So whether you have mixed feelings on that or not, please recycle. Recycling is a good thing. I know it is, but I mean, I, I see a lot of the places and I talked to a couple of people and they said most of it's going right in the plant because there's no market anywhere. If I could touch on it. Yeah. So we have total recycling. Uh, it's a $20 million facility with optical sorters. Anyone here can go and tour the facility and see what happens. So the, what happens is the material comes in, it's dumped on our tipping floor, it's pushed and put one barrel. All right, and initially that pulls out the majority of the cardboard. Then it goes to the facilities, and everything's sorted either through optical sorters or through eddy current or through magnets, and everything's pulled out in an automator. So we have very little waste that goes to the landfill. Uh, right now, we're at about 25% uh, contamination, which in the recycling number is really low. Normally, most recycling is about 50 or 50% contaminated. So, we're able to fish out most of that. Um, American Township was also included in the pilot program, all flexible package, which very few townships have, which is potato chip bags, Ziploc bags, paper bags. That is the new pilot program that we're instituting and initiating a recycling program. And that's happening at total recycling. So that's something new. Plus, anything that ends up in our landfill, our landfill is handed over, which means when we cover it up, we're pumping leachate back in with bacteria and algae. That's speeding up the process of deteriorating the material, which then we collect the gases, the methane, we create electricity, and right now we're currently about 12,000 tons a year. But so most of the material is being reused and reburned. And you said you could so, yeah. And can we tour that section too? At 11, I went up to 11 on how to have a seat for school. And I could, I could watch the whole thing here, then come in for fun. Is that what you're doing? Yep. In your you watch the entire process where you literally cross the bridge from each other. So you have the recycling plant, you can walk in and they'll tour the whole facility with you. And then you can go right across the bridge and they'll tour the landfill facility. Well, the state of the art, which most of your materials end up being decomposed because the standard landfill is just a yarn zip off that every stuff. Up there, it closes up, see in 10,000 years. That's not happening at our facility. So yeah. we're we're degrading that material, we're uncapping it, filling it back up to the to the approved 200 foot level that's we're allowed, tapping it again, and repeating that cycle. So we're we're generating power for 12,000 homes out of the track that was left. So a lot of it's just that very happy. That will look good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm not trying to stick up for mascara, but I do know for a fact, just from being in the trucking industry, five years ago, right, when we had Eagle's contract, these fleets are so much more expensive to maintain. Yeah. I work for Penske Truck Lease. It's absolutely insane how much it's went up, right? Okay, just on that avenue, it's absolutely terrible. And you're, you're adding with the new DEF system. And the DPF filters, all this extra money in service costs, it's absolutely insane how much that has went up. And the regulation fund, it, it's, it's almost unfeasible for some companies to even own their own trucks anymore. And that's why Penske makes so much money because we lease entire fleets and then we maintenance that fleet. So it's just drivers, you can't find drivers either. Right? Yeah, those are probably you, the you, vehicles. So you can't find drivers anymore. And another thing that's changed. You can't go to the DMV and get your CDL anymore and go through that whole entire process. You need to you need to pay federal law five grand or more to go to a driving school to be able to get your CDL. That's the whole industry is everything is changing 
And, and now we're, we're being faced with having to have electric freight liners. We're being mandated on all that. So, I mean, it's getting pretty rough out there for everybody to own a fleet of trucks. Yeah. So I, I get that avenue too. Um, and that's going to be across the board for, and that's going to actually hurt these guys to have one or two trucks badly. Um, so it's just a whole different world. Yeah. Just, just to echo that, because I don't want to take a huge amount of time to do a very long agenda, but we're, we're not opposed to a, a change. I'm very much a common sense person. So is Jesse. So if you say, Hey, we really would like to have this look at, we would start looking at the, the consideration for three, essentially in three years time, once we're on contract or have a renewal thing. Um, about potentially having multiple haulers be allowed. But the important thing is having the right mechanisms in place to make sure that you don't have people just not doing it. Right. Because that's the whole reason you have an ordinance is to make sure that there's some public safety thing addressed properly. So while I don't like the price increase either, the reality of it is prices everywhere on everything have gone up. You look at a, a gallon of milk or a gallon of gasoline or the price of car or um, cable TV, like no matter what you look at, it has gone up substantially in the past five years. Trash collection is no exception to that. And I will also say that Eagle would leave stuff out in front of my house for three weeks at a time. Yeah. So we won't, we'll see. See. we won't have that. Yeah. I've never had three weeks. I I do. Do. Unfortunately, I, 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 I know, but it looks terrible on Main Street, right? When, when we live on Main Street, it's for three weeks. Trash and, and recycling, both. And then it blows around town and I'm picking up everybody's trash. Right. They left the soap out there for two and a half weeks when in the middle of a snowstorm. Thank God I had a subcompact or I really would have been in trouble because I couldn't clear the snow out of there. And it was a terrible thing for these poor guys in the town for plowing, leaving a soap out there. And they told me they were going to pick it up. We called ahead to the whole nine yards. They left it sit out there for two and a half weeks. So I was very unhappy about that. But what, yeah, so they, they, were, they were very unreliable. And, and, and I get what you're saying, if they may not have done that to you, but I do know for a fact they might have picked up one area of the township. And then they didn't do this set. So it well, wasn't just last week. Yeah, it they, wasn't. They picked up my garbage and my recycling. But they, but they never, did. yeah. So it was, they were never consistent, right? So even though they picked up yours, they probably looked at mine and went, eh, our truck wasn't running right, right now. We're going to go. It, it was just amazing how they did things. It was incredible. Yeah. So, I guess yeah. That, so that. maybe they were daily. Yeah. I have horror stories. Yeah. yeah. As girls, Al and I are constantly on. On the phone, emailing Eagle every single week, God. almost every single day about something. Last recycling, they didn't pick up the entire week on Main Street, and I think your area. And we called them every day for the entire week. They said put it out for the following week, and they still missed the best week. Yeah, so my, my recycling was out there for like two weeks, two and, yeah. and a half weeks, roughly. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So, so, not oh, yeah. We, we should have them miss a single look, even through COVID. Through the labor shortages and all that, we were on time every every single time, and we service hundreds of these dogs. You can call your neighbors here, Lower Harbor, and South Harbor, and all the We were there on time every week and pick up every single week and every single thing. All we can provide you is guaranteed service. We're going to be here and we're going to start the church. Yeah. So, what were the other prices then? So, going going back, uh, you mean like with the mascara thing? The, the prices were trash collection with a tote, trash collection without a tote, recycling with a tote, recycling without a tote. Um, Eagle, when they departed the service uh, area here, they basically just said, you can keep the totes. We don't, we don't want them back. So that, that actually did save us a little bit on, on that by having our own totes so we didn't have to get totes from, from mascara. So we're even, we, we are correct. No boss. No actually, the girls in the office did a lot of work on that yeah. because they originally wanted to charge everybody for those totes. Um, but they did a lot of behind the scenes work on getting them to just let us have the totes because of how many times they didn't come. So there was a lot of work done by the ladies in the office. That, by the way, if it hasn't been said, thank you for, thank you. for that. Yeah. So th there's a lot of behind the scenes that they do that really needs to be brought forward for people to see it's 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 a lot yeah there's a lot of stuff that happens there's a lot of meetings which i'm sure everybody sort of appreciates and understands but like i said without passion too much on this because we're already like 25 minutes in um i don't like the price increase either but unfortunately that's kind of the reality of that and if you want we could give you a copy we'd have to dig it out of the file but of the, the last time we did an rfp like two years ago I think what it was, it, it, 
<laughs> you know, it's, yeah, in your favor and everything else, that's the cost. And, yeah. You know what? I welcome anybody from the community coming to us with research, right? Yeah. yeah. I, as long as I've been here, as long as yeah, I've been here, it's easy to sure get it. It's easy for people to come in and say, hey, these are the problems. But it's hard for people to come in and say, hey, I have here's here's the problem. Here's the problem. And I did this research. Please look at this. Because it could be something we've all missed. Well, I like to just be yeah. I get it. Right. I get it. And you know, it's 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 easy for someone to come in and, and be upset about something, but it's not easy for someone to put in the legwork and do it. But I respect when someone does that. So sell it. Okay. And I know you don't want to say filling. I mean, I call it several times now and nobody even gets back. That's already bothered really bad. <laughs> You're not getting an answer. I, I actually did get I did get good service. Okay. Um, so you'll get a bill in the next month. Okay, but in the meantime, I'm not. There's a discount for a senior, yeah. right? And there's a discount if you pay the full amount. Is it double if you pay the full amount and you're a senior? Yes. It is. Yes, I recognize. The federal one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also I don't know if it's going, but the the senior bag rate is still the the eight dollars a bag. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, I know it's paid in half. That, that is always an option there if you want yes. your citizen. That's why you consider senior 65. 65. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. as I say, you're probably pretty close, but well, I'll use my own grandfather as an example. The guy is 93. He generates maybe one bag of trash a week. Like, that's all. If, if, if that. So, we get him on the bag rate, and when he has a, a full bag of stuff, we throw a tag on it, throw it out. Otherwise, it's mostly just recycling and I have for his like cans and stuff in my recycling because it's again like a couple of yogurt cups here and there. So like there there are options for areas of the community that are, are like senior citizens for for being uh I'll say more affordable. Um but you have to meet certain criteria to be eligible for that. Then how do you show that's the other thing you said? That'll be proof of age whether it be a photo ID or a certificate passport or something. Yeah, how do we get that to you? So when when you receive the bill, it'll give you instructions on that. Okay. Probably because I'm not going to be able to look at it. Yeah, if you have questions, you can always call the office. They can get you in contact with somebody from Mascaro, or I'm sure there's a, probably a, a number on the bill that you can contact Mascaro directly. But and I'm sure you guys would be receptive if, if someone would scan it all under the scanner, and then you send that in your bill and say, "Hey, here's my phone, right?" Okay. Yeah. And then we're also open to assist. If you got me on the next bid, yeah, to give you pointers on how to lower the cost, yeah, because sometimes just a couple words at the end of it to change the entire structure. Well, yeah, we appreciate that. Like I said, it's I don't want to make it sound like we're we're down on the staff. We're absolutely we're not. But um, the the legal process, just to kind of circle back to that, is we as a municipality are constrained by certain rules for when we do so. One of the things is if it's over a certain amount or it's a certain type of thing, it has to be publicly bid. They have to be sealed bids and then we have to go with the lowest qualified bidder. So in a situation where only one bidder bids in, they are automatically the lowest qualified bidder. That's, unless there's a reason to completely throw it out, we have to go with it. And then in this case, we have a trash service this isn't like, oh, we wanted to buy uh, a truck and only one person bid and it was $200,000, which we can't afford. We don't have the option or the luxury of just saying, no, we're not accepting it because we have to. So, thank you for coming out. We very much appreciated having you here. And um, as Jesse said, if there's uh, ideas or suggestions or anything else that you have for like, hey, this other municipality is this other way, we are absolutely happy to look into it and do do research on our end and see if that is something that we can adopt in the future. Yeah. I welcome all the research. Well, we're going to help like buying power if you wanted to play pool store for anybody. Possibly. So we would, I think they have a coalition of governments and we would have to, in order to get in on that, have to join the coalition of governments, which has its pros, has its cons, and it has its difficulties too from getting involved. It, it's a lot of risk. Yeah, Tom. Um, you want trash picked up, we get a better deal if we throw this many people. Well, you, why do you need all that other? Yeah, typically, as I say, typically it's there, there is a certain economy of scale for picking up an entire municipality rather than just like three houses. Um, to the tune of the a lot of places probably wouldn't want to pick up an individual house simply because, like, if they have to drive 15 minutes to get to your house, you drive 15 minutes back to the normal area. 
they're going to take an absolute bath on like fuel and uh, labor for, for doing that. So um, hopefully, again, it's not a solution. It's not like I can wave my hands and have it have it be fixed to your satisfaction. Hopefully you understand a little better about kind of the, the underlying bits with it. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah, Brian. <laughs> Question, which is very awesome. Yeah, you're talking to somebody. Okay, got the information. Got, got it. Still happening. Yeah, and let's say like from a, from a cost standpoint, I'm I'm not happy about the increase in cost for the day, but you got we got to have trash collection. It's a good thing to have trash collection. It's a good thing to have recycling. So, can we put out two cans for regular trash? Yeah. So, um, our contract also does have the the bulk item. In it too. So yeah, one week. So there's it's pretty much the same sort of thing that you have with Eagle. It's just changing providers. We tried to keep the actual service the same in in the actual request for approval. Yes, Matt. Yes, Matt. So the yeah. question was you had a lot of items have to be wrapped in plastic. So the mattress and the box spring has to be wrapped in plastic. There's been a rash of bed bugs. Ah. So for for the record, just in case anybody couldn't hear the, the comments in the audience the question about throwing out mattresses, um, mattresses and things like that, the sofas I would imagine too. No, the mattress, the mattress, the the mattress the box 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 yes. uh, have to be wrapped in plastic when you're throwing them out, and it's a concern about bed bugs. So that's really the one stipulation for bulk items is if it's a mattress or a box spring, you have to, to wrap it and um, one of the members of the audience did indicate that you could get a, a really inexpensive like plastic bag essentially that goes over for the purposes of disposal. So, um, okay, since we don't have any more public comments, there is nobody on Zoom. And for the record, Irene is not here today. She is absent. She is sick. So we hope Irene feels better soon. Um, moving into the main items for discussion, we have the design group. Uh, we were presented a design around the building. Uh, Lee Olson will attend Thursday Board of Supervisors meeting and work with us on getting the proposal together for the grant preparation portion of it. Um, Peter, excuse me. Yes. She is going to be sending his proposal this work on the grant. Okay. Okay. So I was actually going to ask that question. One of the grants that we have to submit for, and it's item number four on the agenda, is um, kind of contingent on having. The, the design and proposal in place that we can, can make a grant request. So um, I think we should probably reach out to Lee one day about getting something over and uh, getting whatever we can get there for getting a grant in earlier in the week because the deadline being Friday, I don't want to do that Thursday night. It's almost okay, perfect. He's already talking in good shape, but I, I don't want to see us. It is part of the work. Yeah, yeah. And I don't really have a problem with that, but we um, we want to make sure that we have that done well before Friday so that we're not scrambling. Um, so for anybody that had missed previous discussion, this is, uh, we did a cost benefit analysis of trying to repair and upscale the capabilities of this building, and it is wildly cost prohibitive. So we're chasing grant funding for putting in a, a new community center building, uh, redoing the, the garages for the trucks, redoing the playground, uh, and we have two uh, main grant sources that are immediately available to us right now. The first one is the DCED open application that is part of the COVID-19 ARPA money. Um, grant has to be submitted before April 30th, but this would potentially help fund a, a good, this a high percentage, um, maybe 25% or greater. And then the other grant is a discretionary funding from Senator Casey. And this would potentially fund 75% of the total project up to $2 million. So if we can get grant submissions in for both, and if we were able to get both grants, we could conceivably have a complete overhaul of our municipal uh, facilities at no cost to the taxpayers locally or very touch. That's what we're that's what we're shooting for. <laughs> Much like a bunch of the other things we've talked about. If we can't get grants, we can't do it. So it's important for us to chase these opportunities at every opportunity that we have to make sure we, we at least put our hat in the ring while we're trying to get to funding. Um, there is a, <clears throat> to the, a grant preparation that has been 
proposed, we need um, effectively a resolution to adopt two letters. Uh, one of them that would con contain some wording around matching funds being being included, and one without. Uh, they are respectively 2024-8 and 2024-9. Um, Colin has to review, and then we would be, I guess, approving them Thursday night based on Colin's input. Um, so more to come on that, but one of them has a, a close deadline that we only found out about like last week. So we, we got to scramble a little bit and get that in before the 29th to make sure that we're, we're eligible for that particular grant. Next is the Act 537. We did the Act 537 uh, special study. Uh, Joe Baldwin's from my Dupera has submitted the final draft of the special study following the town hall meeting that we had. Um, and again, this is one, another thing that I'm, I'm not super happy about, but it is the way that it is. Um, I'm glad we had a number of people out for the Act 537 to, to hopefully get a little better understanding of the situation that we in, uh, we're in and face from an administrative standpoint, and from a legal requirement standpoint. I don't want to see us spend any amount of money that would put residents out of house and home. And likewise, I don't want to see us enter into a situation um, or lack of action that would potentially put people out of house and home. So we're, we're working our best to navigate that, make sure that we are staying compliant with the state and are not getting fined or having other similar actions taken against us while we try to navigate the grant landscape. Because as again, just to reiterate, if we can't get the grants, we can't do it. Uh, anything that you want to add to that? No, um, but I will say there's really not much we can do until we can prove that we can't afford it. Yeah. Then we can fight as a board, yeah. right? We so then that's, that's the one understanding I want to get across too, because it's not like, we, we got to put in the effort to, to prove that we can't afford it. And then that's when we would have to fight. You got you to pick your balance. Yeah. Yes, sir. Would it be any cheaper or easier to get money if you did a lesser program, if you did more or less with this new one you're talking about? Yeah. The, the, the grants are to go a different route, just maybe do so, the building itself and go straight into like stone crop. So there's, I had actually looked at this a couple of years ago. Um, I think it was 2018 or 2019. Um, the infrastructure for Wollsdorf, their interceptor pipe is much smaller on that side of things. I think it's only like a four inch interceptor or like an eight inch or something like that. It's significantly smaller because it's the tail end of the system that they had designed. So Stone Rock is effectively the last stop on, on that pipeline that you can connect to. So us taking it straight up Main Street, unfortunately isn't an option. And the way second class township code is written if you have a pipe for a municipal project, whether it's water or sewer, if the front of your house is within 150 feet of lateral, you must connect. It's not something that we can discretionarily say like, no, it's just these houses. If the pipe goes by it, you have to connect. There's nothing that we can do. When I call them here, I was, yeah. I've been finding this when Tony was in already. Yeah. And Tony told me, you know, I, Got so many different answers up on these. How you guys stand on? We're not going to make you hook up. You got to stay the art system. Blah blah blah. No, un unfortunately, that is. I also called PDP. Yeah, and they told me you can put a variance in. You can you can request a variance, but the DEP has to approve it. And between us people in the room here, they've told us in meetings that they're not interested in approving anything like that. That's the, one of the points that I was trying to make at the town hall was if you try to go after an alternate system where you try to get um, exceptions based on like, yes, this this house has this side or the other thing, they're going to go, no, you're going to be really well protected. They are, unfortunately, the discretionary body making that decision. And their decision is if you don't have whatever meets current requirement or what fits into their, their concept of acceptable, they won't approve it. So there's a lot of like ifs and yes. everything else in there, but it all gets back to the department approving it, which is where like my my stance over the past couple of years because of being kind of locked in the other plan that the, the other two supervisors submitted um, is you have two opportunities to effectively dispute this either on the grounds of improper design or incorrect design and funding, and that's. Um, right at the start, you agree with the plan because then you can take it through like the environmental period and everything else when you're shovel ready because then you can contest that. Okay, 
we've done everything. However, we only got $2 million of grants. We can't possibly pay $9 million for Gannon. Well, what, what's going to stop this thing and what you're doing? We, we take it to court. So rather than fighting over every little thing and racking up huge costs and getting fined by the department for non-compliance in the meantime, you kind of have to go through the, the motions. You have to play the game. It's really so it's still, still going to be 50-50 shot. This is the thing you're getting. Well, but again, this is this is where we're we're aiming to demonstrate that we are doing this essentially protest. We don't like it, but we get it. We understand the legal requirements. And if we can't get the kind of money on it, then we dig in and say, look, we've done in good faith everything that we, we've said we, we would, and we don't have the ability to do this because it's not possible to affect it. You will, you will bankrupt the township. You will drive people out of houses home. And when you get it into a, not a, a jurisdictional court in terms of like administrative stuff, when you get it into an actual court court, it's evidence based, right? It's without a shadow of a doubt. So, if we say our average income for this area is, I'm just going to make up a fictitious number here it's $20,000 household for retirees. Our average is $40,000. There you go. We say you're, you're looking at putting a cost of $50,000 on a house. When you, when you look at the numbers, we can't do it. That's, that's pretty. Uh, irrefutable evidence. So if a judge looks at that and goes, no, you can't force them to, to connect to that, even if they, they said they were going to buy a certain date because they don't have the grant money. Like, if you can't pay for it, you can't buy it. And we, we don't have the ability to take out a loan that side without tax base. Then, and this is this is wording that I was trying to get into the original plan before it was submitted, is our, our long-term plan is we go with what we have. If it fails, we remediate as best we can until we have the more permanent solution. But we do the work, figure it out, and then we apply for grants every year. And if we get a situation where we get 90% grants or 100% grants or whatever the magic number is for it to be affordable, then, yeah, okay, we do it. But until then, we keep doing the best we can so that it doesn't break what we have here in the township. And that's, that's the best we can do without entering into a lot of other very negative situations. So um, I know... The grapevine is a very useful thing. So if anybody asks or it comes up, please help us dispel any uh, false or fictitious rumors because there's there's a need in certain areas for sure. Some people have failed systems. People are dumping stuff in the wells, whatever. That stuff's going to have to get dealt with one way or the other. But the legal requirement that we are under from state law and state statute is we have to put an Act 537 in. The DEP has already said that they wouldn't approve anything other than super because of the situation with lot size and everything else that we have. And the reality is the board had already put in a plan that was approved. Once that's approved, the game changes. The rules are completely different because you have now legally agreed, this is what we're doing, this is the timetable. So like I said, unless we're gonna have a long and expensive court process every single step of the way, and we can be potentially fined during that time because of non-compliance, you have to pick your battles. And the best way to do this in, in our collective thought is demonstrate good faith. That way, if you have to go to court, you can say, like, but we're cooperative, we're trying, but we can't look at the evidence. Otherwise, we're, we're setting ourselves up for failure. And we'll have a situation like Robinson Township where they said, look, we can't do it. They fought it kind of the, the wrong way, in my opinion. And then the DEP just came in, put the sewer system in, and stuck them with the bill with no grant money. So we don't want to have that happen. But I want to commend, thank you for calling the DEP yourself. Yeah. And finding things out yourself and doing research before you come to the table and complain, because that's important. Yeah, no, no, I've, I've, I've called them. And I've, I've, been doing this I've asked them myself throughout the tenure of time I've been here. And I even called them. Maybe four months ago, about asking about the black law. There's rumors going around that the reason that that wasn't opened back up as a re as a restaurant was because the DEP wouldn't allow it because of the water situation. I was told directly by the DEP official that that was false and that was never even called about, and they didn't even know anything about it. Yeah, it wouldn't be it was, by I was teachers. I was told directly. I was told directly about that because I was saying, okay, so why is one person allowed to have a business here with food and another one isn't? Right, and I was told directly by the DEP. That was never discussed. We know nothing about it. So there's a lot of fake news in this town. The grapevine, the grapevine is very, very big. Yeah. So like I said, I asked, said so the, the as a, a personal favor, I guess, as a as a supervisor 
president. If you hear somebody saying something that's patently false or incorrect, <laughs> please let them know that, like, no, that's not the case. I was actually in a meeting where I was at the town hall, and I heard it straight, straight from the source that it's actually this way. Because that will help spread the correct information rather than the, the whisper down the alley that sometimes happens. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so moving on to the next item, which is the sewer, sewer management program. Uh, Hydro Terra has requested that we work on sending another letter notifying homeowners of an educational session uh, meeting uh, about online maintenance and the, the what, the why, and the how uh, annually. So we would start doing this in April and continue that every year. Uh, property owners, uh, as we discussed earlier, can use any pumper that they wish. Uh, just they have to ensure that the pumper has registered with the township, which is one of the requirements of the ordinance and with the state law. Yes. yes. Okay, I'm one of those people, and I haven't complied yet. Okay, there, we've been we've been kind of loose on enforcing it because right. of this change. Well, happened. Just, I I tried. Yeah, I I looked at the there's some kind of site. Yep. That right in that, that site every time I get on it, it's not there. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, I've had a problem. Let's well we'll take a look at it and we'll actually we'll... this is this is, this was a while ago, okay. but when I would try. They would say that site is down or it's, you know, whatever. Um, but also, I didn't really understand because there was, but now you're saying there's only one, you only need to get one guy. So yeah. That's what you're saying. Right. Um, see, I do think that needs to be out because, yes. again, you know, top of my area, yeah. you know, there is a lot of us out there, but, yeah. you know, we're all kind of confused. So it's sitting there saying, well, okay, so what are we supposed to be doing? Here? Yeah. Um, we're we're going to send another letter. Okay. We're gonna informational section here where I don't even know if it weren't necessarily be a full board necessarily. At least one of us will be here. But it would be the, the sewage engineers explaining that whole process. Because previously, again, for administrative mechanisms, we had no really good way to say, okay, Mary has had her property pumped out. We don't have to talk to her for another four years. Right. There was not a really good way to keep track of that and make sure that people were complying with that. Whereas when we brought my Terry in, they actually have a tool that does specifically that. So we said, hey, if that's the case, we don't so have is to. That, is that the side of the Probably. Probably. Okay. Um, and I will double check and see if that's still a problem, but we'll, we have your name here. So we'll maybe grab a, like an email address or something okay. for you before you leave. What site was it? Um, we, we haven't talked about that. But it I think is. It's just... That's. Ah, that's probably. That's. that's okay. Yes, yeah, so that was that was the previous MCL. Yeah. Yeah. That mystery, mystery solved. Yeah. We're currently registered on the territory. Yeah, there's six of them, including your and brother or something. You, you can get yeah. one of those levels they register on our territory. Okay. Yeah, so you, you have a list. We have a list. Yes. yes. Uh, well, that's okay. that that of six that that yeah, so we'll uh, we have six that did register. So the one thing we have to be part of because we actually asked the solicitor about putting a list up or publishing a list, and there's some some odd legal concerns about advertising for other people, technically. Um, so that might be a situation where we say, like, just confirm with what you call someone to say, like, have you registered with the township? Okay. And that's the easiest way to do it. Because then you can pick whoever, and if they haven't registered, they can just go to our website and they can register. And that's it's, it's fairly straightforward, but there's there's certain requirements with how they submit the information. Because aside from the, the administrative tracking aspect of it, one of the other things that we, we needed to make sure we avoided was if we had just every random pumper doing it, the information that gets supplied in is going to be all over the place. It's going to be crazy and unformatted. And there's horror stories that have been told to me where somebody pumps, the pumper fills out essentially like, yep, it's all good on a top tip napkin, goes to send it in. And all of these things have to go into the DEP. So like, again, the DEP looks at it and goes, this isn't acceptable. And you as a homeowner, unfortunately, have to get your stuff pumped and PM and inspect it at PM, which is just going to be another two or three hundred dollar cost. And we want to make sure that you guys don't have to do that for some stupid, uh, arbitrary and angry reason. So there is a list that's on there that I'll Correct, correct. And that's something that if you you can't put it out there, but if you called the office and said, hey, what are the, the list of pumpers that are approved? We are allowed to give it to you when you ask, but we can't just shotgun it out there. All right. Because the letter would help us. I, I got a letter I and mean, I did my area for years. Yeah. You just messed me up now in three years because the rules. So I got to yeah. do it this year. So I will call you for a list of yeah, that's before I make all kinds of phone calls and say that. Uh, yeah. 
So there's, there's a little bit of changing on that, but the goal is we're gonna get another letter out. We're gonna do some information sessions for anybody that would wanna come and ask questions and things like that. But we're, we're trying at every opportunity that we possibly can, whether it's this or the building, we are trying to approach things with a common sense attitude uh, that's well grounded in whatever the law is and, and make sure that we have uh, controls and processes in place so that it's not just all private knowledge, whether I'm on the board anymore or Jesse's on the board, that it, it stays consistent regardless of who's sitting in these seats up here. Right. Well, not just a letter to hear your dues. Yeah. You know, well, you, you would get you get a reminder for sure. We're going to be sending out any letters about, like, hey, this is a thing. There's some tips and tricks about how to take care of your system so that you don't have problems, like really easy ones like don't wash baby wipes, you know, things, things like that. Uh, but the goal here is to, to not be overly annoying about it, not overdo it, but just make sure that people have the knowledge out. Probably be just the year of student. Yeah, well, that's yeah. one of the things we may as, as Excuse me. Yeah, as, as we, because I don't I, you know, I didn't want to come to this office, and that's where I was trying to get yeah. information. As like, like everything else, and this is maybe yes. yeah, it's a, it's a cost savings for everyone. Township and, and homeowners. So as as we get more mature in this and as it becomes just kind of a normal process over the next three, six, ten years, whatever, we may switch to a just letter reminder you're due. But for right now, it is so new that we need to make sure that we have repetition on that. So um anything more on that? I know the letters for the residents yeah. to send in um that should be finalized. Okay. I'm seeing middle of the week. I, I saw stuff going back and forth yes. between the attorney and him okay. the on Friday. So good. Good, good. Okay. Uh, the next two things are the short term and long term rental inspection ordinances. Um, Colin uh, would like the board to review some of the uh, questions around the ordinance. Um, we have a couple of sample ordinances for both that we need to look at. Um, really what's going to have to happen is we're going to have to, to dig through and see what pieces fit best for the township from, from both a long-term and a short-term um, portion so that this would cover things like apartments, uh, Airbnbs, uh, short-term short rentals, uh, hotels technically would fall under short-term rental, um, as well as if you have, a, I'll, I'll use the tuck me in as a prime example, people living in the hotel, that would be considered a long-term. So. We're trying to get stuff in that would give us administrative grounds to be able to make sure that we don't have some of the, the health and safety issues that we do for certain properties that we currently don't have a lot of utility to be able to action. So just again, just to dispel any grapevine rumors, this is not some overarching draconian thing. This is to make sure that people are using a property as a money-making uh, vehicle that it observes a minimum standard of safety um, and nothing else. We're not gonna come in and tell you have to paint things a certain way. It's gonna be that you have smoke detectors, that you have GFIs in the right places, that you don't have an electrical shock issue or fire hazards or uh, a hole in the roof with mold or something like that. Or someone to rent a home out with knob and tube. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, knob and, knob and tube isn't inherently unsafe. It has problems. But again, it is when you start drawing a lot of time. I think it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we won't get into the hair straighteners and stuff. It's pretty, pretty rough. The, the electrical components of it. But the bottom line is the, the ordinances that we're considering is to make sure that we don't have somebody renting out a property and then piling like 50 people into it or uh, making sure that we don't have a, an issue where somebody is essentially being a slum ward and we're running properties into the ground and creating safety hazards for the tenants and everybody else. So, um, we got to look at those. We got to find what fits best, and then we'll talk to the attorney about any of the pieces. There may be things that we don't quite um, understand. Understand the wrong word, but there may be certain language that means a very specific thing that we either have to include or deliberately not include to make sure that it fits what we're trying yeah. to accomplish. Yeah, the read, 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 well, read, I mean, it's not even a read, read. It might be we have to ask the attorney because uh, right. I'll use like may and shall as, as two examples of that. Very, very specific meanings in, in legal. Ways. Legal writing is very, very touchy. Yes. yes. That's why it's written right. in a certain way. Yes. Because that one word means one word. Right. Yes. So other than being sensitive around that, we already have a couple of very good samples and we just got to, mm -hmm. like I said, piece them apart and make sure that we have everything covered for what our concerns are. 
Zelda. Uh, speaking of that, the 4050 Conrad Weiser Parkway, there are safety and fire hazards that were raised, and we are in the process of working with Kraft, the police department, and the solicitor on uh, pursuing an administrative search warrant. We made a motion at the February Board of Supervisors meeting to continue uh, with the Fourth Amendment criminal search warrants. Western Berks Joint Zoning Section 403, uh, the amendment that we have been trying to get in for way too long. Uh, they will be meeting on April 18th at 7 p.m. at the Heidelberg Township Building. Jesse and I, being the representatives from Marion, will be present to, to attend. Um, just as a reminder, this is the update around the keeping of pets as domesticated farm animals to correspond to the actual uses within our community. Um, what's currently in the zoning, uh, every single person that has any sort of livestock that's not to the ag would be immediately non compliant. So uh, we need to get that fixed so that we don't have a situation where we're uh, either in intentionally not enforcing a law for a long period of time or having a law that is just instantly putting anybody in non compliance. Um, Property maintenance issue is the next item on the agenda. This is that uh, AT&T service building located at 660 Canal Road. Kraft sent a demolition order for the shed in August. Uh, the solicitor has suggested that we send one final letter to AT&T um, as they had re relocated their headquarters in New Jersey. So we'll give it one last attempt, but otherwise we'll be going down the avenue of pursuing demolition. The property down at the yeah, there's that bend and it's got like a whole lot of yeah. yeah. So we've we've been reaching out to ATT yeah. for literal years on this. We haven't gotten a peek back. So we're we're trying to to navigate that as best we can because what I said is the what we don't want to do is just go through and knock down knock out like phone service and internet to like everybody. I don't, so, think, I, I don't think I don't think there is either, but we, we want to be thoughtless. I've been there since uh, 16. Yeah. Um, next is the proposed resolution. This is the municipal claim and tax lien law. This was recommended by the solicitor. This assures that the township can seek reimbursement for any attorney fees when filing or pursuing a lien claim. It accomplishes that purpose by adopting a fee schedule for attorney fees concerning legal services relating to the filing and pursuance of claims. Um, which the municipal claim and tax lien law requires. So um, we're not going to take any action on that today since that's a, a bit more in depth. Um, we'll talk to Colin about it Thursday, but this is something that we need to file to be compliant with that, that tax lien and claim law. Um, Dutch Valley Foods, uh, they have seen an auto increase on their letter of credit. This auto increase will go from $381,166.98 to $419.283. Uh, $419,283.68. Um, we also received a proposal for ag security for 601 Marion Drive. Philip and Julia Weiss own this property. The application was received. Uh, if we wait 180 days, it will not uh, incur additional costs. It automatically goes to ag security. So um, we actually intentionally do not want to reply to this unless we were objecting to it, which I don't believe we're going to. Um, that way, there's no extra costs that the homeowners have to incur on. So um, we'll give them a, a polite heads up mm -hmm. on that, but uh, no news is good news and it saves them money by doing it this way. So uh, next, road maintenance. Uh, we are working on, uh, as the weather has started to turn, we're gonna be cleaning culverts um, and getting some roads out to bid as we had discussed with uh, Chuck, the engineer at the last meeting. Uh, so that we can start getting into that uh, five-year maintenance cycle that we had talked about. We have a couple of roads like Sheridan South that are in dire need of, of attention. And unfortunately, until we put the fires out, we can't, we can't get into a, a good uh, maintenance habit while the house is still falling down. Mm -hmm. So um, within hopefully the next one to two years, we'll start to get to a point where we will be able to focus on one big project a year instead of like three or four and then devote the rest of the the effort and funding to maintenance seal coats um, cutouts small bits of asphalt that sort of stuff so uh, we have the list of which we pass that over to chuck so we just have to to see on thursday night what his uh, preliminary estimates were so we can put it out and end it yes that needs to get out yes and we we started working on this in january we started, we turned that over to the engineer. The engineer had a couple of questions last month. 
Um, and we have our, our list of roads that we would address this year. So theoretically, don't, don't take this as gospel, but after Thursday night's meeting, we should be able to say, okay, authorize this one, this one, and this one to go out on admin based on what we're, what we're anticipating via costs. Yes, agreed. So it's better. Someone needs to contact Charlie Harris. Well, Chuck said he was going to do that. Okay. Yeah, Chuck said that he was going to, for every single project that we do, he was going to contact Charlie to make sure that it is eligible and pre authorized for liquid fuels. They should be pre Correct. Yes. Thank you, um, next is tree trimming. Uh, we are working on getting quotes. Um, however, the places that we have called uh, keep saying that we're too far out from the actual uh, time of when the work would be done. So we got to closer to time. But yeah, as the weather so starts, they're saying we're too far away from their local. Oh, okay. I, 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 misunderstood, I misunderstood that memo. I actually I called the guy about something with. Uh, trees on my property i'll send you the, the card because okay. he came out and he did a, a couple of tree trimming things and i just i didn't have a, a ladder capable of doing okay. um actually i had two people that i had called and both of them were very very friendly with the one guy was cheaper so i'll send that your way and see if that's something that they can do for municipal trimming as well okay um okay uh Wintersville road the culvert there uh, engineer has this re uh, recommended that I be replaced before we have any uh, onset of roadway selling. Um, this is the one that he was um, going to get us a updated suggestion and design because the pipe that's there may not actually be needed anymore. We may be able to redirect water a, a different way with the swale um, and be completely having to have that under the roadway. So nice. we should know about that on Thursday. That was one of the things he was working on, but that is one of the, the bigger things that we have to address before the road. Six. Speaking of roads, the 2024 projects, um, engineer has had given us preliminary estimates around Sheridan Road South, William Penn Boulevard, Lebanon, Sheridan Road North, William Penn School, Stafford Road, and Wintersville Road. Um, the, the rough ballpark figure for doing all of those roads would be in excess of $2.1 million, which we obviously don't have. Uh, so we asked him to move forward with design work on the Sheridan Road. Uh, from William Pendle or to the Lebanon County line. Um, that would be the one that we go out for bid on, and that one was a rough estimate of $326,445 to, to do. So, again, we get a uh, bid ready to design on Thursday night that we can authorize that for William Pendle. Uh, next item also related to roads is the guide rails. Um, engineers has has suggested we prioritize William Penn Boulevard where there previously was a guide rail. And there's just posts there. Um, potentially along with Hickory Road would be a, a very small section of guide rail, but we previously couldn't get any firms to do that because it's such a small quantity. Um, the engineer estimate for this was about 38500 to do those two. Um, and then whatever the whole situation with Bollinger Road settles down, we're we'll putting a guy here up on Bollinger. So uh, again, we should have something hopefully Thursday night that is bid ready. That way we can put that out and bid and get that rolling too. Um, Bollinger Road, because of the possible litigation that's in play there, we're going to skip 20 and 21. Um, the equipment and equipment repair, we don't have anything new at this time, thankfully. We didn't have any, any repairs since last month, which is great. Um, and we had gotten some estimates on some new plows, which we're, we're not going to try to organically finance. We're, we're going to use those estimates that we got to try to put in like a local service grant request for a plow and possibly a truck while we're asking for it to see if the, the state, the county, or possibly any federal grants would be willing to, to pay for that. So uh, more on that, but we've got maybe a couple of years left in the current plow before we have to replace it. Um, signs, uh, we are, um, I think, uh, we, did we purchase these yet or are we looking for? No, we're looking to look at Okay. Because um, I had talked to John briefly about a couple, a couple of these. Um, snow emergency, no parking. Uh, there was a request apparently to get 12 of them along with two dangerous intersections and a 300 foot distance from trucks sign. Um, 300 foot distance from trucks would be applied to the back of the trucks so that we don't have people getting too close to the back and either hitting our trucks or getting hit by our trucks. Um, so Thursday night, we'll make sure that we have that uh, as a motionable agenda that we for the purchase of those signs. Um, Butch, if you could do me a favor, can you get a quote from MSI this week on the cost for that, that collection of signs? Maybe we can put the, the, the price tag in the, in the meeting. 
Thank you. Um, next item is the MTCA. Uh, they made edits to the, the proposed lease. Um, we had no objection as a board, so when that came through, Kelly, um, I've already endorsed it and signed it, so we're going to go to the solicitor, and we're, we're in good shape. Uh, yes, yeah, you, you'll have a, a, a sealed copy. Um, the trash recycling contract, as we discussed earlier during public comment, um, is changing. Once again, thank you to Jose from J.P. Mascara for being out here this morning to address questions. Um, by chance, will you be or somebody from Mascara be able to be out here on Thursday night for the meeting? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Because we, we generally have more people for the Thursday night meeting. I'm fairly confident that we're going to have very similar concerns. No. Um, so Eagle, uh, through a lot of very hard work and effort from the ladies in the office has agreed to allow the residents of Marion Township to keep the totes free of charge. Um, we will not be having to be billed in retrospect for any of that legal, and we also will not have to have that be a part of our, our contract with JP Mascara. Um, JP Mascara has also agreed to, to uh, use the totes. So again, trying to trying to drive costs out wherever and uh, however we can. Um, the senior bag service. Um, the uh, five labels for forty dollars. Labels be called by residents, um, so there is no accrued shipping costs. Um, if you do choose the senior bag service, the recycling is fifty dollars and forty three cents per quarter, or two hundred dollars if you pay in full. It's one hundred ninety six dollars and sixty eight cents to be specific, uh, which does grant you a two point five percent senior discount. Um, JP Mascaro, um, I already signed the notice of award uh, this past week, so that's in the works, if it's not already made its way over to your office, um, and uh, I did endorse the contract. Um, the request that we have for nine senior residents to use the senior bag service, um, uh, residents of the loan, accrued the bag trash for two weeks. Um, we already talked about that because that's the. Yes. yes. So, Kelly uh, submitted a request um, to use the senior bag, but he is not 65. Oh. Um, there's actually been a couple of them asking about it. Yeah, so this is this is where I think we we would need to talk to to the solicitor specifically. If I if I'm not mistaken, the the contractual agreement for that service is 65 years of age or over, and that's not something that we can specifically or explicitly grant a, a an exception to. Yes, I believe that was uh, in the bid specs. Yes. So I can we change? Yeah. So that's that's. We're kind of grounded in in that as it's it's contractually there as as a component of the service, no different than saying you want traffic picked up once a week. So unfortunately, that's not something that we're going to be able to improve based on the legal reasons of it. And like I said, we can check with, with Colin. Colin's going to be the legal authority on that, but I'm I'm pretty confident that that's what it is. If you're 65 or older, cool, you can do it. If you're under 65, Unfortunately, even if you only generate one trash bag a week, it's it is what it is. Um, the next thing, and thank you for clarifying on that, Sue. That didn't really make a lot of sense on the um, uh, the notes there, specifically on what the the context was. Um, next, uh, Twilight Acres at forty one uh, ten Conrad Boyser Parkway uses Republic, but not for a dumpster. Um, they have cans, so uh, we will need to send them a letter letting them know that unless they are taking advantage of that dumpster exemption as a, as a commercial property, uh, they would have to get trash service like everybody else. So, uh, 33. 33. Okay. Uh, the dumpster exemption. Okay. So, yeah, we'll jump down to 33, which is the dumpster exemption. Uh, the secretary would like to start this. I'm all for it. We just need to make sure that we have, uh, we'll walk a call on that, making sure that the actual requirements are crisp and legally binding and, and are very, very, very specific around who can get a dumpster and who can't. And my question now is is also, um, we're requiring the rental place down here to have a cover for yes. the dumpster so yes. the trash don't blow. Now they don't have a dumpster now, so that yes. makes that means they're not grandfathered into that. They would need to. Have a cover, right? When uh, that's not even a grandfather thing. Like there are certain things, like IPMC, for example, requires certain because things. Because the trash. Like, everybody here was picking up their trash. Yeah. So, so like, that's that's something that say something that plays in the office and they can reach out and craft. But um yeah, about them having a, a wind barrier. So yeah, my dumpster. My recommendation on dumpsters is you have to have them um, 
um, screen, both from a wind and a line of sight standpoint. So you can't, you're not supposed to have it in plain view. They're supposed to be, and if you look at other like housing developments, like they always have that fence, the privacy fence around the gates, um, that serves two purposes. That keeps stuff from blowing out, and it also keeps it from being put up with an ice. Yeah. So if we have a situation where that is not the case, um, not everybody can be everywhere at the same time or see everything. So if you spot it, call it, and okay. then you look at it. Because I will, because I I see that even when, in the summertime when they do get a dumpster, it's over full. Yeah. Right. Right. And and everything. right. I'm sure you probably ran into a similar sort of conversation with the engineer or the crafter who went about the storage places. Um, with the, the dumpster that it has to be yeah. secured, it has to be fenced in. And, and again, that's a, a line of sight, uh, the just physical containment sort of thing. Yeah. Like, so we're going to make them do it. We got to make it. Oh, we have to do it. Has to be, everybody yeah. has to do it. We, we agreed. So um, for 29 and 33, we need to make a motion for that on Thursday. Night. We will, yes. Okay. Yeah, so 29 and 33 will require motions on Thursday night. 29 okay. for, for the points of clarity. 29 would be authorized to be the sending of a letter around. The dumpster exemption for the the use of the township trash hauler, um, based on the fact they are using cans rather than the dumpster. Thirty three would be around uh, having the attorney review the dumpster exemption and make sure there's nothing that needs to be updated or changed based on uh, legal requirements that we have with them. The use of that, that program. Um, okay. Uh, next is the Berks County Public Works Association. Um, this is on April 11th, 2024, the Holy Fairgrounds Holy PA. Registration is open until April 1st. Uh, this is an educational seminar. There will be presentations um, around things like uh, vehicle maintenance, vehicle blocking, uh, along with associated with equipment and chemicals, et cetera. Um, we won't do it today, but we'll make a motion Thursday night to authorize like, the road crew and EMC and anybody else who wants to attend to go. As far as I know, there's no cost for that. It's just register to show up. Next is the polling place agreement. This is for April 23rd and November 5th. The office will be used by the election services for voting. Uh, the agreement needs to be filled out and returned by uh, March 15th or April 15th? Uh, Whoops. It was on the summer. Oh, okay. You just need to ratify it. Thank you. Um, so we'll make a motion to ratify it. This is just a housekeeping item. So uh, I'll make a motion to ratify the holding place agreement. I'll second that. And we'll call Peter. Aye. Jesse? Aye. Okay. Uh, next is the PennDOT mowing contracts. This is contract number 39003594, uh, which expired on December 31st, 2023. Uh, we have to fill out the resolution page and return it to renew their three year contracts. And it's the agreement for us going 422 and invisible, but 492. Uh, um, a small version of this is still in It's a small version of the top law has been forward, which the resident of. Yeah. Knows, so we don't Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, it's mostly the point of view. Okay. Yeah. So I knew it was four. I think I thought it was that, that one small section near the, the bridge on 422. Yeah. Okay. I think sometimes, <laughs> unofficially, I think there's times where we drill a little bit of that because it's terrible to see. But at, at the corner there, like we're now in 422, somebody's been cutting it and it hasn't been penned up. It's not. Good. Okay. Well, then some, some good Samaritan has been doing that because that, that stuff grows up there and you have a hard time seeing traffic coming the other way. So somebody, somebody's been cutting it down. But it has been kind of yeah, so like, yeah, somebody has been a, a good good neighbor have done that. But uh, yeah, either way, we have uh, a couple of small sections of road that we plow or and mow on behalf of and not. And it's just, it's a an ongoing thing that the agreements are always three years long and we're on a renewed cycle this year. So we'll do that Thursday night. Uh, the next thing is the, the office staff has requested that we get the full version of Adobe to make their lives easier about editing PDFs. Uh, we're going to be looking at what the purchase cost would be for that. Um, the initial thing they looked up is a there's a one-time cost of $358.99, which is more cost-effective than paying the yearly subscription of $156. Um, you basically break even on that within two years. Um, but I need to check and see if there is maybe a more efficient license that we can get as an enterprise um, for use on multiple computers rather than having to buy multiple individual licenses. So I'll check on that throughout the week. 
Um, and I believe uh, Lisa and Val are going to check with the, the IT support company to see if they have suggestions or if they have yeah. um, anything already that they know of, like, yeah, we've done X, Y, or C for another client. So um, I'm all for it. If it's a, a small technical improvement that makes the office process easier and more consistent and reliable, let's, let's get our, our ducks in the room. Let's do it. Um, the last thing is the emergency management coordinator report. He's not here today, so we can skip that. And then we are going to public comments. Um, I don't have any public comments other than, um, once again, welcome to the board, Jesse. It's good to have you on the board. Um, and I was actually very happy with the turnout that we had for the town hall. And again, I think a lot of people understand, hopefully now, that we don't like it. We don't agree with it. It's unfortunately the situation that we're in and we're doing everything within our power to make sure we navigate this correctly to avoid uh, an adverse impact in the community. And transparency, we're trying to be as transparent as possible and you can at least direct questions to us, but also try and do your own research because that's going to answer a lot of your own questions too. Yeah, or and, it, or it might spawn good questions. It's, for right, and it would spawn good questions for us too, right? I mean, it's it's a good thing for people to do that because then they know the facts. And there was a big problem with people not having factual information. And I know that from just living in town and getting flyers myself as sitting on that side. And I did my own research and I'm like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> where are these coming from? And then they couldn't cite the information. So where they got it from. Yeah. So just to, to put a fine point on it, uh, sometimes it may not on its surface seem that way, but we are absolutely doing everything we can to represent the, the interests and the best interests of the township as a whole. And like everything legal, you got to build a case for it. Yeah. So if we apply for all these grants, they don't grant them to us, we can't afford it. That's when we can put our foot down and say, look, we did all of these steps. <laughs> it's not like we're being, you yeah. know, making a good friend or, you know, opposite or whatever. Right. We're putting forth a good faith effort. And if we can't get there, we can't get there. Yeah. So. Um, that's really the only thing I have. Uh, Jesse, do you have any comments? I do not. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lisa? I'm um, just going back to what Jesse's saying that if anybody has any issues or problems, call your office. You know, we're here to help you. Uh, more than willing to help you guys, and we'll get the information to the supervisor, you know, as fast as we can. We'll work with you. You know, we're here. Um, the totes, um, I know Eagle did say that you don't have to. I don't think they're going to be going around everybody's house and looking. But if you put this like slap like a piece of like duct tape or something on their name on the post to cover their name, spray paint, something. spray paint, yeah, yeah. something to so cover that, it up if you could. We I should don't... probably put something in that in the letter that goes out. Like I hate the I hate the mixed mediums here, but yeah. the letter that goes out about the unlock education, we should probably put something in there that says like you know due to the tra change in trash service, um, please be sure to put something over the eagle name on your totes, whether it's paint, duct tape. Um, it's, it, it, it's, all, it's there. So, off the record? No. <laughs> Officially on the record. It's, it's a professional courtesy that they've asked that we remove they, it. So like I said, are they going to be driving around the township looking at everybody's traffic? Yeah. So they they a hey, request. Hey, 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 this, is, this is another good faith thing that they've asked <laughs> us being hopefully good partners on one thing to good responsible people that we can at least make the ask. It's not something that we're gonna drive around and, and be like waving our finger at people and finding people or anything like that. We, but we have wanna to, we wanna be good partners and things. So similarly, like if JP Mascara had a had a request, uh, I'm just gonna fictitiously make something up. We would do our best effort to try to comply with it. And that's just again right, put it courtesy. Yeah. So being being a good neighbor in, in the community and the uh, ecosystem of doing business. Um so thank you. Yeah. Um like I said, if anybody has any concerns or anything or any suggestions, please let us know on anything. You know, we're yeah, here to we have to sign up for the Zoom. Oh, you, you can you can join us at any time. Yeah, we can give you the details of it. Okay. Um, we are going to be looking to switch to Microsoft Teams in the near future because it's cheaper in the long run and it's got all the same functionality. But the way the Zoom is set up is it's the exact same URL every single time. So once you join it once, you can join it any. And we're going to set up the Teams thing a very similar way. And when we do make that change, we'll we'll advertise it. 
honestly, I'll probably walk around with flyers to things in people's doors. But um, when we change venues, we're still going to keep it consistent so that it's the same joining information every single time. That way, if you've got it once, you've got it for. Um, that. Uh -huh. Um, the Civic Ready is available now. That's to get the text alert to your phone. And if you're interested, you can sign up on our website. And also, there's an extra newsletter sitting up here. It has the information on it also. You can take one of those with you. And again, with the pumpers, any pumper, and if they're not registered, just ask them to register. And they can do that on our website also. Yeah. So again, just a lot of they're on your so the, the list is there, but if a pumper, if a pumper uh, goes, okay. they, can they, can register. they can register with the township. Okay. And if they're not registered yet, just tell them to go to our site. Uh, and they can register. Uh, yeah. Um, so thank you. Um, I think that concludes the meeting. So um, yes. yes, absolutely. Uh, for the building, for the sewer project. Even if you don't want the sewer water, you can put that in the letter. Yep. Whatever you can give us in the right If yeah. you don't want the sewer, the more detailed on why you don't want the sewer and the financial impact that it will have to you, I would love for that to be included in that letter. Because so when do you need that? As soon as possible, yeah. but so here, let me, let me, there's there's actually there's three three letters in the screen here. So the, the first two, one of them we would need by this upcoming Friday, and that's which is the building, the, 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 the township building. So if you have the ability to to write up something shortly about like you know, hey, I'm I'm a resident, I'm in complete support of the township trying to make our building a you know, playground a better place by going after grants to support that we're strongly considered for things like this. Would go a long way. I plan on writing a letter as a, as a resident and a supervisor. Jesse has actually already written a letter. We're going to be hopefully getting a letter from the MTCA, from the school, from the Little League Association, to try to prove that this would be a good use of grant money. That we we have a strong need for it, and we're not really able to do this on our own any other way. And if anybody knows who the AA was that used to come here, um, we could probably get a letter from them. But they stopped coming here because the building was destroyed. COVID. So if we can get reach out to them and get a letter from them to support, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. Likewise, if there's any other community associations or HOA or anything like that that would be able to or willing to put a letter in there saying, like, you know, this would be a huge benefit to the community and this would benefit our residents. You know, it doesn't have to be war and peace. It just has to be a, a sincere factual statement of you as a as an organization or as a resident saying, you know, I I support this. I want to see this happen. Did you get the what I don't know what all that what happened? Yeah. But many years ago when my kids were little, they wanted to build a big field somewhere. They wanted to buy lands. How about using the ones you have? Yeah. Is anybody using this for baseball? Well yeah. Yeah. So we're we're not we're not looking at getting rid of the ball field. We're actually to the contrary, or maybe you could get them to write you a letter. Yeah, and well, that's that. Yes, yeah. so little the little league and the school district are two calls that I'm going to make this week because we found out about this the, the first the one that's due most recently was like Wednesday or Thursday of last week. Thursday. Like we found out really late stage that this is a, a huge okay. grant opportunity up to like two million dollars. So we're we're kind of scrambling to get everything in before that deadline. And for little using this, they yeah. talking about buying land. Like, what you want to have? What's yeah? So we're using we're using yeah. it now. I think it'll be We're it. pretty also about this township building. It's going to be more multi-purpose. So there's going to be a hall in it that everybody can rent with the tables and chairs. There, we just yeah, had a, know, we just had a person um that I know in town. She's having a wedding, and she's like. Oh my God! They want to charge me two hundred dollars just to rent chairs. I'm low. Yeah, yeah, and all this other stuff, and I don't know where I'm going to have this because I'm going to need to get these chairs in the hall separate. And I said, "Well, this would cure your problem." Yeah, and she couldn't even look. She almost fell over. I had a letter the same day. Yeah, not to mention like one of the things that we're going to be building in is we're going to have a space that's publicly accessible. Like you could come in and talk to the office staff, but there's also going to be a small meeting room that if you had to do like a telemedicine thing to meet with a, a doctor or something, you could do that. You'd actually have an office for when the tax collector does tax collector hours that she can be in there and you could have a nice sitting area rather than sitting in the home. There's a ton of uses that we just can't accommodate with this building that we would be able to with an actual 
kind of purpose driven, purpose designed community center. The historic design being uh, so the building, the building actually it has historical significance to the residents, but it's not actually a historic center. And what we're what we're looking to do is when when we do whatever with this building is we will take pieces out of it, like we'll salvage the blackboards, the doors, the woodwork, yeah. all the historical items upstairs are going to go into it. We want to keep the character of Mary Town, but unfortunately. The building isn't really fit for purpose. The only reason I say that when I built my house 30 years ago, they held me up for a year for a day for season. And that's the so it's fun to get in an open field. Oh, yeah, so open farm. Unfortunately, I, mean, I can't guarantee that we're not going to have that, but it's not super fun. I didn't put that. Um, so, do we, we have to say what brand scored. Oh, you can, you can leave it very open. You can just say that you're in support of the board going after grant opportunities like this one to try to, to better the township. Okay. You as president feel that it is an important thing for us to try to do. But this is not going to get 15 people signed. No, unfortunately. Yeah. No. Well, like, let's put it this way. If you wrote that letter, uh -huh. you could use it as a template, but they need to be individual letters. They, they don't play with the, the whole petition sort of form. Just drop them off here. Drop them off at the top. They need to be dated and signed. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the one we need by Friday. That's the one we need by Friday. And so they have to be residents. Technically, no. Oh, okay. Oh, they know. So you have to write the whole thing. I know. They can talk to you. So the, we'll print a letter and then just the letters. Just turn yes. So What's that? For, for the first two that we're talking about, building a community center, because of the, the nature of this, they were not in the sense. Are you sure about uh, as as the, the second grant that is for the building is the end of April. Uh, uh, the the week, the end, end of April. Right. Um, and we could actually reuse because it's the same the style same. of grant. We could oh. take the same letters of support as well. We would need a, a new grant. Uh, the sewer. Uh, as Jesse said, you don't have to be in support of the sewer project. You can be ideologically against it. You can be opposed to it on any number of grounds. But you can still say that, look, I'm, I understand the situation and I support the board trying to get grants to make this feasible because I would never be able to pay for this project without grants. And then if you want to tell me a bit about your, your particular situation or any hardships you face, that's great. That's fantastic because that serves a bunch of purposes for the afternoon presentation. Uh, the grants, along with if we do actually have to take this to court, we can say, look, there's a, a legally demonstrated apprehension and opposition to this, but we have still tried to comply the best we can. So, with the sewer, there's not a hard set deadline on those grant letters. You can get them in pretty much whenever, but it would just be, again, I'll, I'll use the example that we had at the town hall. I don't like this. I don't agree with it. However, I understand that we're being required to do this by state law. And it's important to me as a resident to get as much grant funding as possible. Otherwise, it's going to be impossible because I would be without a house at home or, you know, my neighbors that are, are fixed income and I don't want to see them get kicked out because they can't afford to do this or liens or whatever. Go, go into whatever detail you feel comfortable with, but you don't have to support the project to support the, the concept of getting grants for it. That's an air letter to be... Yes, we do actually, we're, we're working on a, a form, a sample letter, where you would fill in some pieces and then maybe write a little bit about yourself, but the, the key things of, you know, talk about, like, I understand the, the legal requirements for this, I like it, but such as it is, it's important that we get grants like this particular. Um, so we'll, we'll circulate that at hopefully maybe not this Thursday meeting, but the next meeting that way we can start getting people those. Well, you might have it by Thursday. Okay. Because I know yesterday there was a little bit of tweaking going back and forth between the well, If we do, that's that's fantastic. Uh, but yeah. Um, I... the, the goal here is trying to get as much, and I'll, I'll put air quotes around support uh, for the project, specifically as it relates to funding. Like I said, you don't have to agree with it. You don't have to like the project because like I guess at first I'm not a big fan of it, but we're trying to make sure that we don't have um, a, a bad consequence of this on either side of the equation, either by not doing it or by doing it. We have to try to find that, that sweet spot down the middle or in some way constructively pushing back on this when the time comes.
Um, we'll have a sample letter for that, and um, we could potentially even just throw something together real quick about the, the, the building playground stuff. But again, grant writers, grant evaluators aren't looking for more of these. They're looking for something factual and um, sincere from people saying why and, and what. So you're, you're not going to be judged on, on style or, or writing or anything like that. It's, no, probably not. <laughs> probably not. Um, but we just we want to try to get as much support in that because if we can actually get both of these grants, we would effectively not have to pay a cent as taxpayers. And maybe if you get something a form, yeah, a lot more people willing. Yes. Oh, I, 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 I don't disagree with you, but um, we want to make sure and uh, we want to make sure that we get these in in time. And unfortunately, between now and Thursday is only a couple of days. And then the deadline is right. So we've got a for this for this first one, we've got a really narrow window to hit. So everything and anything that we can get is great. And I'm gonna write a letter, Green's gonna write a letter. I guess just to re reiterate, I've asked the MTCA and the Stonecroft HOA to write us a letter of support. I'm gonna reach out to the Little League and the school. Um, and again, if anybody has a like Eureka moment and says, like, oh, the AA or the old Marion Grange or the Boy Scouts or whoever would be willing to write a letter saying, you know, this would be awesome. We would totally use this. Then get it in because that's every little bit helps. The Grange could come back because they could rent the hall for a meeting. Yes. Yeah. Just because they don't own the property doesn't mean they can't use it. Exactly. Um, so I think that concludes all the comments we have. So I will make a motion to adjourn. The time is now 10.32. I'll second. And we'll call Peter. Aye. Justin. Aye. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good week. Thank you.